Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Royal Police of Antigua and Barbuda Drama Group's presentation for Police Week 2021. This year, we celebrate Police Week under the theme, Working Together to Achieve Stability in Times of Uncertainty. Tonight, we give you four short skits from past plays. Greed and Power, Mama's Boys, My Birthright, and finally, a piece with a message about the deadly COVID-19 disease. After a year of absence from the stage, the police drama group is elated to be back in your company. We love you and deeply appreciate the support that you have given us over the past 50 years. On behalf of Commissioner Atlee Rodney, other ranks and file of the Royal Police Force of Antigua and Barbuda, we extend our sincere thanks to you all. Joining me now on stage for a quick interview is none other than Sergeant Renee Roberts. You may know her from home and on stage as the cheerful Bubbles. Welcome, Sergeant Roberts. How are you this evening? I'm fine, thank you. Now, Sergeant Renee, it has been a pleasure seeing you on stage these past years, but tell us, how has the planning been for this year's pieces amidst the COVID-19 disease and all of the protocols that we had to follow. Okay, this year for us during the pandemic, due to the pandemic, we have to follow all the protocols involved, given by the health officials. We had to wash our hands. We had to do social distancing. We had to practice. We had to practice, and. Um, over the years, we have pulled in place. And this year, because of the COVID pandemic that is going on, we had to limit ourselves to scenes from plays that we have done in the past. So what we did, we have four plays, four scenes from different plays that we have done. If you were not in one of the, the scenes to be practicing at that particular night, you will have to be scheduled so every practice session was scheduled. If you're not to be there, you should not be there. You weren't, you weren't supposed to be there. So everybody had that opportunity. Everybody had that space to do their job. And of course, as a member of the Royal Police Force of Antigua and Barbuda, and of you, you guys have been doing such a great job by letting us, the civilians, here in Antigua follow the protocols as well. It was more than necessary for you guys to be following the protocols as well. So kudos to you and the cast as well. And also, just quickly, if you can just give us, you know, just a little synopsis as to how it has impacted you personally. I know we are accustomed to seeing you on stage and you yourself always have looked forward to being on stage. So over the years now, how has it impacted you being not only on stage but off stage as well how has you know being the character of bubbles impacted you both work-wise and socially okay um bubbles the character um for me personally um that's me <laughs> that's me um that is not acting that's just me so when i step on the stage my personality comes out in that character um this year um because of the COVID and stuff like that, I choose not to part participate in this because of what is going on. However, I'm here giving my moral support to the team behind, and I think the team is doing a good job. We're doing a good job. We'll definitely look forward to see what it is that they'll put on for us this evening. So thank you so much, Sergeant Roberts, and I'll let you get back to your duty. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And we move right into our first presentation. We really do hope that tonight's presentations will thrill and excite you in the anticipation for what is to come. So do sit back, relax, and enjoy a blast from the past. The first piece presented this evening was written by Owen Jackson in 2007. It was originally performed by the National Youth Theatre of Antigua and Barbuda, but tonight 
the police drama group will present it to you. Two scenes from the play My Birthright, featuring Constable Carlos Javis, Constable Pascal, Constable Rika Christopher, and Constable Kareen Roberts. Do enjoy. here, the prodigal daughter, after 10 years, is now you decide to show up? Your mother had to become sick and close to death for you to show up? What the hell is your problem? After 10 years, you're still so bitter? Look, I didn't come for this. And furthermore, I have as much rights to be here as you. Yes, that's true. But you and I both know why you pick up yourself and come home so fast. Really? Beatrice, what the hell is your problem? Oh, I know what this is about. You couldn't satisfy him, Beatrice. That's why I took him from you. Johnny was mine from the start. You shut up about Johnny. Shut me up, Beatrice. I had him first, not you. So you know what? You reap what you sow. At least, I am not the barren one. I gave him a daughter. Blessed are those women like myself whose womb can be alive. We want her to haul my belly and fall. Is that my big sister? Hey, sis, why you never come to let us know you're coming? Well, at least one person in this family glad to see me. So what you bring back for me? This bag look heavy, you know. I brought back a few things for Truno, but before I unpack, tell me really, how is Mama? Not good at all. You need to go in and see her. Might be the last time you see her alive. Is that bad? Yes, and I can't see Mama now. The old lady resting. Beatrice. Don't Beatrice me, Denny. Where the hell she was all this time, eh? Where she was? I say I can't see Mama now. The old lady resting. I'm not going to allow it to disturb her. Hello? Hello? Look, girl, you might be a little older than I am. Plenty older than I am. And I am not afraid of you. 
I don't need your permission to see my mother. And wasn't she your mother for the 10 years that they walk off and leave her? Eh? Answer that. Listen, I don't have time for this. Denny, bam! Why you always have to be like that, Beatrice? Because she walk off and leave us here to take care of Mama, and I can't stand her. Everybody knows that she was with him first. And you broke them up. And besides, that happened so long ago. Neither you nor she are the man now. So just give it up. I am not going to give it up that easily. I'm going to take all that she has done to my family to my grave. Go ahead. Let it eat you out. I'm going in to see Mama. she thinks she is. She is the only one out of four children to treat mama so bad. She walked out over 10 years ago. Not a word to anyone that she was leaving. All we know, she get up early morning, dressed like she going to work. And in the evening, we got a call from she that she in England. Run, she run behind Johnny. God bless my younger sister in Italy. Marry a nice boy. Send money for mama every month. Send a barrel every three months and she make sure she call every Sunday. If it wasn't for Bridget and the little money that Denny gave, I don't know how mama would live. Because I had to stop working to take care of her full time. I had to neglect my duties as a mother to take care of mama. But God sees and knows all. Well, I know why she's coming home now and showing interest. The big 30 acre piece of land and property have she give me. But I can see what happened around here. Secondary school, past Bolands, past Crab Hill, past Johnson's Pint, past Erlings and Father, you come and live at Old Road. If better what kind of fool they take me for, eh? Mommy, you see, that's why I don't like to talk to you about anything. Because you get vexed for everything. You just watch how you talk to me, Mia. You're treading a very dangerous ground. I'm not finished with you yet. Where's the medication for your grandmother? Take it inside and give mama one. Yes, ma'am. And don't think I forget about that young man who followed you home. We're not finished talking about it yet. Yvette, turn up right there. I chops you silly a while. I chops you silly a while. You want me to make a it? Let me tell you something, see? As 16 years old be, and as long as you still under this roof, you still under my jurisdiction. You're a king or queen and rule our country in here. I am both mother and father to you. And I say, now nah, bring the child in here. You go ahead, you'll get what you look for around here. Continue.
can't believe she would do this, Denny. I can't believe she would stoop so low. Beatrice, we don't know if she'd take it up. Don't jump to no conclusions. Where you say you put it? She knew that it's her name Daddy put on it before he died. That's exactly why she catch the plane and come home so fast. Beatrice, stop speculating and let's look for the document. It's not here, Denfield. It's not here. You know she can't do anything she want with the property and we can't do anything about it. What do you mean, Beatrice? You're not listening to me, Denfield. Since she was always Daddy's favorite, before he died, he put her name on the deed for the property right next to Mama's name. So, if Mama dead today or tomorrow, she can do anything she want with the house and property and we can't do anything about it. You're joking, Beatrice. Anyways, she's our sister and we are still family. She won't do nothing like that. And besides, Mama's still alive. Only Mama can do anything with that deed. We hear what the doctor said though. Mama don't have much time. Just stop talking like that. Let's look for the document. You take up a document? What document? The same one, you take up thief. You see me take up any document? Yeah, move your hand right now. Hey, 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 hey! So you take it up? Maybe. Maybe not. You see? You see me tell you? She guilty. Mary. You know that even though your name is on that deed, Mama was gonna change it after you walk away from this family. My father loved me and meant for me to have this property. You hear this, Denny? You hear this? Mary, please. Don't Mary please me, Denny. It's about time to buy Tishnog out the high hash, you pan. You tell up there, you know, fair job now? Boof! Mary, I can't believe this. How you expect her to behave? What do you expect her to say? She's the one taking care of Mama. Don't give me that, Denny. Don't give me that. Mama, it's no more my responsibility than yours or hers. I don't know what you think you're going to do with that deal. But let me tell you this. When God calls her mama, I am not moving from here. And as for you, you are dead to me. You and I are no longer family. You're a wicked wretch, but you just watch your back. That's real rich, Beatrice. Real rich. You have been dead to me a long time ago. What makes you think I care about you? You are not sister of Mary! Mary! Don't marry me, Danny! Everybody in this neighborhood, you know, that the only reason she taking care of mama after the house and land, everybody know that. She's so concerned about deed. She neglect her duty as a mother. Danny, she gone? Yeah, but... What are you talking about, Mary? School children say <laughs> that somebody in this house making bones is not me, because you know, is not she, and is certainly not mama. You're lying. Yvette? Same one. Mary, what you telling me? Yvette pregnant? About three months are here. Mary. Yvette pregnant here for three months and nobody know? She tied on the belly. All people say, planting sucker follow the roots and the coconut not fall far from the tree. But Mary, that's not fear. When Beatrice was pregnant, she was over 16. <laughs> yes, she was 17. <laughs> Terribly, you know that me had a deed. And you're in here, I help Beatrice look for him. You're dangerous, bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't want to talk about her. Let's start business. Mm. Everything set? Everything ready. Danny, don't bail on me. You know that you are the only one in this family that's on my side. Denny, please, because you know when Bridget comes, she's going to be on Bridget's side. Denny, please, don't bail on me. Oh, God, Denny, go quick. Go quick, Denny, help my mama dead. Oh, mama dead. Oh. 
there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, two exciting scenes from my birthright. Some familiar faces, yes, but some new faces as well. The second piece comes from the first play written by Mr. Owen Jackson for the Police Drama Group. It was written and performed for Police Week 2008. At that time, the police headquarters was transformed into the performance space. Tonight, they recreate Mama's Boys, featuring Constable Suzette Benjamin Greenaway, Corporal Alicia Brown Weston, Constable Morris, Constable Carlos Jarvis, Constable Ixon Peters, and Sergeant Denise Byers. Do enjoy. Such an embarrassing situation. One red wig, Sylvia. One red wig, and you make mama leave the house like that. Marge, what me must do, eh? Mama, I'm a big old man. Listen, I was so embarrassed. Everybody down the church to talk about you. They so reach you to church. What's this up since when mama I behave with that kind of something? Me think she stop? Stop? Look, I better talk to she now. Because for she behavior, I want this grace from this family. And I'm not going to put, put up with it anymore. Well, I definitely going to talk to her. Because I cannot take a next scandal from this family. Marge, mama start to wear all kind of stuff that not even me and you wear. Mama started to dress like a Keisha in them age group. She started to lie with a ton of young boy and all kind of sudden. One big, big change come over Mama, and I don't know where it come from. Well, Daddy gone, and if her mother feel that's the way to live her life, she's a big woman. The only thing we can do is talk to she. But anyway, what Sean say about all this? Sean? And Sean, um, um, Melissa encourage you to buy all the young people clothes she wear. Melissa? Melissa, can my tongue go buy the young people someday? You girl, you just wait mm -hmm. until when me see she. Yes, my dear. Sean, I'm um, encourage you, and Sean not saying anything. Good afternoon. Keisha, 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 what happened to you? Keisha, come back here to me. talking about Madge? You see what I'm talking about? So Keisha, where is Mama? She's coming up the road. Madge, you see the ignorance? You see the ignorance we talk about Madge? Tall, tall, this just sound like a movie, man. church today was unbecoming. And but what? Look here now, girl. Me and the Spirit of God me today. So now come pray me day now. Look, I referring to what transpired in and out of church and just last week. You go back and say to go fight over one tiller Campbell soup. Your own son nearly have to lock you up. Oh, the devil set you for me? Tell her you can't find me. Mama, 
That is all you're going to say? The reports I've been getting about you from March, they're not good. Mama, what's the problem? I don't know what this big commotion about. I went into town and I buy some new clothes and you, Sylvia Betts. I got in an accident at Bargain Center with a Campbell suit and everybody that can get a fit. My purse dropped from me in a church. I pick it up. Jesus! And everybody that can want to yam me. I want. Nobody can please, are you? That's why from now on, I'm pleasing God and myself. And to hell with everybody else. Sylvia, Mama was fighting in bargain center. And you don't tell me nothing? Well, my. Mama, take a bunch of Campbell soup out of one basket. Because no one will find the shelf. The woman see she and tell she put it back and get your own. Madge, you know mama take the tin of Campbell soup, chop the woman in her head, throw them back in the woman basket and tell she take that? You have a lie. But how come you not tell me what happened? Well, Sean was on duty on by bus station. And because the manager of the family, he sent Carl Sean. When they question mama, Mama said the woman who won the trolley punch foot, that's why she then she chopped the woman with the Campbell soup. The woman said, oh, all she do I just tell mama put it back and get she own. So what happened? Well, Sean and Carpel Jarvis called me from work. Then talk to the lady, then calm she down. Then cash your hospital and even pay she little money so she no personal charges. Well, I am taking mama for a full checkup. Eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Marjorie late. Me don't do that. Then say nothing tall, tall wrong with mama. Mama brain's good. All mama organs and them work fine. Nothing tall do she. I don't know what else to do. Sean, what is this I hear? That your woman Melissa carry mama tongue by young people clothes. Mm -hmm. Wait. You're on a rampage today or something? Me just walk in the house, man. What's the problem? My problem is that little nothing you call the woman. As soon as you start disrespect my woman, this conversation done. You feel because you marry a high color man, at least some of their Crosby's, you better than Melissa. <laughs> oh, where are this coming from? Look, look, the two of you just stop. Sean, the truth is, you have to talk to Melissa about the places that she's carrying mama. And all the clothes that she encouraged mama to buy and wear. Especially their church. I don't know why you're working up yourself so funny. Mama is a big woman. And if she wants to wear young people clothing, what's the problem? I don't see a problem. Dressing like a young woman is one thing. But the behavior mama start displaying lately. We can't put up with it. Look at how she behaving with Pastor James. The man used to deal with our sister when they were young. He could be mama's son. My God, Sean. The man is just three years older than you. That is not the mother that I know raised me. I never thought that I would live to see the day when my children Talking me behind my back. Talk you? Mama, nobody talk you. And by the way, where are you going? O U T out. Mama! <laughs> you are old woman. Start act like it. <laughs> Chat, me don't say she have a problem with my old man. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. I might be down, but I'm not up, out. Mm -hmm. I might be old, but I'm not cold. Hey! I might be anti calendar, but I'm still on the bingo card, if you know what I mean. Mm, pa, pa, pa. Hey! Tell them, Mama! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right on time! Right on time! Mm, looking good, 
Miss Maggie. Thank mm. you. Mama, where are you going with that young man? You, the reputation of that boy in this village. Nobody tall teeth, so, and he comes from a family. They can't even keep their head up. Mama, you used to warn us from that kind of people, eh? and them are the kind of people that you hang around with. I am going to minister God's words to this young man. Lie. Give out some tracts. Plenty lie. And save some of God's children from eternal damnation down at Mills by the Sea. More lie. I'll be doing a little preaching also. So I'll be back late. Don't hold up for me. Sean, uh, eat that. <laughs> All right, Mama, take it easy. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Sean. Uh. You need to think that this is funny. You don't realize the seriousness of the situation. Our mother's not going to give her no tracks. She's up to something. The two of you so uptight. Get on there, break. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Mama's Boys, our second piece in this evening's presentation. And with me is a familiar face, Constable Suzette Benjamin Greenaway. How are you this evening? I'm well, well. All right. And if you can just give the audience just a little synopsis of your character this evening. My character this evening is a daughter who is disturbed by the way her mother um, is dressing. She's not acting her age, meaning that she dresses very provocatively going to church. And in my opinion, in my standing, I don't believe that that is appropriate for church. My experience within the police drama group, for one, it has um, helped me to overcome my shyness. I was always a person that was always in the background. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. <laughs> and um, for this, it brought out the, the actress within me. It has also helped me to become more confident. And um, just take your time. It's okay. It's just like you being on stage. <laughs> and of course, there comes a point where you will stop mid-sentence. And it's like, uh oh, what am I supposed to say now? <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. Um, for me personally, watching you on stage as well, I remember you from... Um, I don't quite remember that name of the play. <coughs> it escapes me. But you had played um, the sister. Again, um, I believe it was... Uh, I just played it a couple of weeks ago when Cara Fester had featured their, their evening of drama and dance. I played that, that role. I remember that. Madge. You played Madge in the scene where your brother had cancer. And it was you and your two siblings that came back to bury your father. Uh -huh. Yes, I remember you in that play. Um, and you always brought out a sense of calmness, a sense of being humble while you're on stage. So I really do pick up there. So basically your characters have been like maybe uh, how you are in your everyday life, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Yeah, and I really find that Mr. Jackson do bring that out um, in persons like myself. <laughs> Say that while hiding my face, because um, I myself was always behind the scenes, you know, technician, light, backstage worker. And now that he has me on stage, it's basically the same thing. He's bringing out that part of me that has always been shy, not knowing what to say. And now, you know, because of drama, you know, theater, we have that other side of us that we're not afraid anymore to stand up and say what it is that we want to say. Definitely. Yeah, but it's always been a joy seeing you on stage. Thank you. Suzette, and I must say kudos to you. Thank you. And a job well done over the years. Thank you. And this is what the police drama group does. It brings out our everyday, our everyday constables, our corporals, our sergeants, our high ranks and files within the police group. And they let us see as civilians that different side of them. And as they feature 
their, the their theatrical presentations for us 2021 this year. I really do hope that you at home are enjoying it as much as I am enjoying it here with them. So I say thank you again. Thank you again. And do enjoy the rest of your evening. You too, thanks. All right. Our next presentation is a play that they did back in 2012 for Police Week of that year. And it was performed at the University of the West Indies Open Air Theater. We present to you Greed and Power, featuring Constable Ronald Francis, civilian Marveline McLean, Corporal Marlene Carr, Constable Renika Isaac, Constable Ixon Peters, and Sergeant Denise Byers. Do enjoy. You can call me whatever you like. You have proven to be worse than a traitor. You're a damn home wrecker. Me? What home wrecker? I am many things, but home wrecking is not one of them. You knew our cousin was married to the man, and you forced yourself between them. Get out my back, Christine! For God's sake! You're my sister! You're supposed to be on my side! I could never be on your side when you've done our cousin so wicked. Really? Christine! Why did you come here today? Why? You're wasting my time. I have an office to run. Where are your morals? Where are your standards, Edna? You don't have any shame? The same place you left yours before you came here. Damn you, Edna! Damn you! Our mother did a poor job in raising us. But you have a mind of your own. You know right from wrong. How dare you? How dare you disrespect our mother? I speak the truth. You know what? If you don't have anything else to say, Please leave. Get out. I will leave when I am ready to leave. You went to the States, got involved in all sorts of illegal activity, got pregnant by a married man, wrecked his family, stole money, locked up for fraud and embezzling, came home with a bastard child, only the clothes on, the back, on your back you had, you remember? She took you in when you got deported from the States. She fed you, clothed you, gave you a place to stay till you get back on your feet. And this is how you repay her? This is the payback she gets from you, Edna? Really, Edna? I did not fall in for her help. She offered it. And you repay her by a stabbing her back? Yes! And what? Leave Pauline and her husband to live their married life, Edna. Why well, you don't tell him that? Eh? What you are you arguing with me for? I am sick of this. I have had enough. Please get out. I know you have better sense than that. I am not Pauline. I will mop the floor with you today if you lay a finger on me. Well, leave. Because I don't want anything else you have to say. Good morning. Good morning. What is going on? Your aunt was dressed here lecturing me about my moral standings. And how ungrateful I am to Pauline for the scraps she gave me when I chose to return from the US. You did not choose to come back. I deported, you get deported. Auntie, this is not the time and place for that. You dear, talk 
to me about time and place? Is this the time and place for you and your mother to steal this company and mark up a marriage? That marriage is over a long time. Mr. Richman don't love her anymore. It's mommy he loves. And any money we get from this company, we deserve it. You and your mother are nothing but common sense. But let this be a warning to you both. I'll be standing on Pauline's side all the way. We know. We know long time that you deserve us. That's no news. That's why me and my lovely mother had to look out for each other and take care of each other. You should be ashamed of yourself. You neglected our mother in her time of need. And now you are here talking to me about loyalty, morals, and standards. You so concerned about Pauline. And you show no concern to your own mother when she was in need. I am my father's child. That's all I have to say to you. And look where that got you. Nowhere. I am my mother's child. And that got you jailed and deported. Honor thy father and mother. And thou shalt not lie down with your cousin's husband. I have spoken. Hear me. I don't care what he have to say today, no. I really don't care. He have to meet my demands or the result won't be pretty. You are quite right. And I'll be standing behind you all the way. Imagine Christine. Christine, you can't imagine. After everything I have done for Edna and she auntie man son. This is how they repay me. Hmm? This is how they repay me, Christine. Calm yourself down, Pauline. I know how you feel. Drink some water. She's a wretch. An ungrateful wretch. My one cousin. My one flesh and blood. Take it easy, Pauline. Take it easy. I stood by him when he got the news of his sickness. And this is how you repay me, Christine? This is how you repay me? Take it easy. Don't study that now. You have to make sure you get all you can know from him before he, she sucks him dry. I know this don't go good. And that God won't be pleased with me. But I wish he'd die on that operating table. And as for Edna, I am going to fix her. Good morning. Hit that! Okay, Pauline, you have to compose yourself, because they're coming soon. Okay, I'm calm. I'm calm. Good. I have to go work now. So calm here, let me know how things go. Okay. Man in Vernon.
left home very early this morning. Might I ask why? By the way, that doesn't even matter anymore. I am serious, Bernard. I need that money. And I'm not settling for nothing less than 50,000. You must be crazy. You get an allowance of $7,000 every month. You don't buy food. You don't pay bills. You refuse to work. And I must find an additional $50,000 to give you in addition to whatever you get at the end of every month? I am your wife, Vernon. When you took me out of my mother's house, you would promise that I would get everything I needed. You would promise that I would be well taken care of. I never promised to rob any bank to give you whatever you wanted. You don't have to rob any bank. You can afford it. And don't think that I don't know about that witch, Edna. Hey! Keep her out of that. You think I'm a gold digger? She's robbing you blind and you can't even see it. It's worse as if you have cataract. The both of you will get what that is coming for the two of you. Vernon, please. You are sick. Prostate cancer, remember? You're soon dead. What you saving up all that money for? You can't carry it with you. And you don't have any children. Use it up now. All I know is that I made a big mistake marrying you. By the way, here are the papers. Sign them because I want a divorce. I will sign them, but you will give me everything that I, 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 I demand. You will take whatever I give you? Are you forgetting that you signed a prenuptial agreement before I married you? You damn bastard! You think I am going to step aside while Edna gets everything? I know! The greed in this family is strong. Good morning, Mrs. Richmond. Good morning, Tommy. Mrs. Richmond, I need to take these documents to Mr. Richmond. Okay, Connie, I was leaving anyway. Look what the wind just blow in. Pauline! Edna! I take it that you're here to see Vernon. I am here to see whoever I want, and it's none of your concern. On the contrary, Pauline. I am the office manager here, so it is my concern. Yeah, which? Vernon is still my husband. A husband you took advantage of while his wife, your cousin, was away. You should bury your head in shame. You may convince him 
to draft up those divorce papers. But I'm not going to just step aside. You just like your dear mother. How dare you? Keep my mother out of this. We go after what we want and we get it. You know what? Go ahead. Do all you want. But remember, I am still Mrs. Pauline Richmond. And I have youth on my side. Me younger than you, but you're certainly not sweeter. Because Vernon takes his sugar from somewhere else. Furthermore, Miss Spring Chicken. Yes, only for a season. I am not a spring chicken. I am an all year round chicken. Ask Vernon. You want to come here and reap where didn't so? Listen here, girl. Go back to the school playground. You have ventured into deep waters. And only real women can survive here. Bring it on, Granny. You prostituting witch. Say my name, say my name. <laughs> Working together to achieve stability in times of uncertainty. Theme for Police Week 2021. I hope that you are enjoying the presentations this evening. So far, you have seen My Birthright, Mama's Boys, and That Was Greed and Power. The police drama group is certainly putting on a mouthful for you this evening. We continue to say thank you to the many persons, businesses, and supporters that have been with us for this year to make tonight's presentations a reality. We say thank you to Police Commissioner, Mr. Atlee Rodney, and the ranks and file of the police force. We say thank you to the Police Week Planning Committee, ABS Television Management and Staff, Courts Furnishings, Inspector Jeff Africa, Mrs. Kivion McKay, the Dean William Lake Cultural Center Management and Staff, and Cool and Smooth Management and Staff. We say thank you too to Mr. Owen Jackson, who has been the director of the Antigua and Barbuda Police Drama Group over the years, and putting on such wonderful, wonderful, wonderful pieces. In light of the COVID-19 disease, And to further spread the word, the police drama group this evening is ready to present an improvisation piece on coronavirus. It is in an effort to further spread the word and further assure you that it is a real and present threat to our survival. In this piece entitled COVID-19, it will feature Constable Ronald Francis, Constable Ixon Peters, Sergeant Denise Byers, and Constable Pascal. Do enjoy. How are you? I'm, thank, I'm good, thank you, Daddy. What happened to you, Lily? Nothing, Daddy. Anyway, Daddy tired. Daddy, go in and sit down, see? <laughs> but, but, Lily, what is the problem? Daddy, nothing. Nothing? I don't want to sit by you, Daddy. Why you don't want to sit down by me? Well, Mommy said you went to a match and you might have COVID. I might have COVID? Might have COVID. Henrietta! Henrietta Parker, come here! COVID, the nonsense you put in the child head about COVID. Look, I will have you not been here so far. <coughs> but, but what is all that for? What is all that for? 
I forewarn you not to go to the march. Because anyway, there's a clustering. You can't get the, the COVID virus. But wait. I am not a big man. I don't have a right to march. Well, it's my right. And keep it clean. No vaccine. But the doctor and the scientists of them say that COVID real. No, me a nurse. And me always tell you how many see people suffer. Woman. Get the facts and get vax. Get facts and get vax what? I try to tell you, Henrietta. COVID is just an excuse for people to buy sanitizer, soap, bleach, and even mask. A big excuse. The same thing me say. And you go to march, and no, not, not one eye follow the protocol. No washing of hands, no, san no sanitizing, no wearing of masks, and certainly no social distancing. You know what? I don't have time for all that, you know. I go to lie down on my bed. Not not this bed, yeah. You have occupied the guest room tonight. The guest room. But it's best you send me to go and lie down by the door. Even that, but not my bedroom. You know what? Yo. my chest. Daddy, some water. <coughs> Daddy, what happened to you? What happened to you, Daddy? Nothing the wrong with me. <coughs> My own child. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, please be reminded our COVID-19 piece reminds us that the coronavirus is surely, 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 surely real. Remember to follow all protocols and keep, keep safe. There you have it, the police drama group in this year's 2021 theatrical presentations for you. We hope that we were able to offer smiles and of course a little relaxation tonight. We say a special thank you before I go to our many sponsors and supporters, the commissioner, Mr. Atlee Rodney, other ranks and files of the police force, the police week planning committee, ABS television, management and staff, courts furnishings, Inspector Jeff Africa, Mrs. Kivion McKay, the Dean William Lake, Cultural Center, Management and Staff, and the Management and Staff of Cool and Smooth. We say a hearty, hearty thank you to Mr. Owen Jackson, the director, and the many other persons who have worked tirelessly backstage, the technical crew, the backstage crew, to make tonight's presentation a reality. Remember to stay safe, observe all protocols, continue to have a wonderful evening, and smile heartily. I have been your MC, 
number 2021, yes, 2021, civilian Monifer Brown. Have a wonderful evening. Protect yourself, Antigua and Barbuda. Stay safe. COVID is real.